money, sir. For nearly 30 years, Mr. Depp built a reputation as one of the most talented actors in Hollywood. A respected artist whose name was associated with success at the box office. Today, his name is associated with a lie. A false statement uttered by his former wife, the defendant Amber Heard that falsely cast Mr. Depp, falsely and unfairly characterized, cast Mr. Depp as a villain, a man who would violently abuse a woman. This is a defamation case. It's a case about how devastating words can be when they are false and uttered publicly. Under the law, a person who makes a false statement about someone else can be held responsible for the harm that results from that falsehood. That's because words matter. He had been in other long-term relationships, as I said. He had two children. And no one had even suggested ever that he was capable of something like this. She will tell you that Mr. Depp will have to prove that the words Ms. Heard used were about him and that they were false. And if he can't do that, and if he can't meet the other elements of the claim, then he loses that claim. And he can't do that. He can't come close to doing that. And for that reason, you're going to hear, in this trial, Mr. Depp's team is going to make it about trying to distract you from that very simple question. Mr. Depp's team is going to try to turn this case into a soap opera. Why? I'm not really sure, because the evidence isn't pretty for Mr. Depp. It's not. You're going to see who the real Johnny Depp is. Behind the red carpets, behind the fame, behind the money, behind the pirate costumes, you're going to see who that man really is. Nothing, nothing of the kind had ever happened, though it, it, the relationship, um, there were um, arguments and um, things of that nature, but never did I myself reach the point of um, uh, striking misheard in any way, nor have I ever struck uh, um, any woman um, in my life. It's too much to cover. I, I, I'm obsessed with the truth. And um, so today is my, actually my, the first uh, opportunity that I've been able to speak about this um, case uh, in full for the for the first time. As a father, um, raising kids, you know, when they were very, very little, um, it was important to me, very important to me, to, to try to shield my children as much as possible from um, looking at their father uh, or their or their mom, for that matter, uh, as uh, uh, novelties. I, I, I didn't want my children to experience 
um, hordes of paparazzis. Um, so I was always a very private person. Um, so for me to come up here and stand before you, or sit before you all, um, and spill the truth um, is quite exposing. And um, it's unfortunate that, that it's not only exposing for myself, it's exposing for my family, it's exposing for Miss Heard, it's exposing for, it's, um, it, it never had to go in this direction. So there was, there was the physical abuse, which was, was a, a constant. Um, there was uh, quite a lot of verbal abuse. There was quite a lot of name calling and um, bullying, you know, m making fun of, making fun of whatever defect, you know, w w one might have, you know, if my brother wore glasses. So, of course, he was four eyes, sir. <laughs> she was loving. Um, she was smart. She was kind. She was funny. She was understanding. She, um, and, and we, we, we had many things in common, certain blues music and, well, music literature, things of that nature. So uh, for that year or year and a half, it was, uh, it was amazing. Um, and with Captain Jack, again, the cartoons, you know, the Pepe Le Pew, it was a, it was a, uh, it, it's like, it's like making a soup, you know, it's ingredients. It's just ingredients. Um, there's some Pepe Le Pew in there. There's some Keith Richards in there. Um, there's a bit of a, you, you know, I figured this is a guy who's been on the sea for the majority of his life. Quite possibly his brains may have been scrambled a bit by the sun. And also I thought that he'd been on the sea for so long that he, had his sea legs, but when he got on land, he just didn't have his land legs. So he could never quite <laughs> stand still. How did the film ultimately turn out in your view? Um, I didn't see it. But uh, I believe that the film, well, I mean, the film did pretty well, apparently. and. Uh, and uh, they wanted to keep going, uh, making uh, making more, and I was fine to do that. Uh, as, for example, with the text messages that, that, that I apologize that everyone's had to uh, experience, I am ashamed of uh, of some of the references uh, made. I'm uh, embarrassed that at the time the heat of the moment, um, the heat of uh, the pain um, that I was feeling um, went to went to dark places. So, yeah, the 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 the, the, the there was a kind of a joke, to, not joke, but but just. Uh, yeah, I acknowledge the the fact that I was the old craggy bogey, and she was this um, uh, beautiful um, um, creature, this, this stunning creature.
We're ready for the jury? Yes. Okay. Ms. Hurd was uh, unable to be wrong. It, it just didn't happen. She couldn't be wrong. Um, so these little digs um, and uh, would, it would commence with sort of demeaning name calling, uh, 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 berated sort of to be made a fool of, um, and those would escalate into uh, a full scale argument. There was no way to fit a word in. It was, uh, it was uh, a sort of a rapid fire, um, sort of endless uh, parade of <laughs> um, insults and uh, you know, looking at me like I was uh, a fool. I was sort of not allowed to be right, not allowed to have a voice. So at a certain point, when that, when, when what enters your mind is, you start to slowly realize that you are in a relationship with your mother, in a sense. And I know that that sounds perverse and uh, obtuse, but but the the fact is that some people search for weaknesses in people. Um, that is to say, sensitivities. Um, and when you've told that person your your life um, and what you've lived through and what you've been through, just as happens in relationships, um, the more that became uh, ammunition for Ms. Hurd to, um, to um, either verbally uh, decimate me or, or to um, send me into a kind of tailspin of confusion and d depression. So I found the only way to find any sort of peace was to uh, try to walk away. If, if uh, she didn't allow me to walk away, um, there were times when um, I, would, I, I would just go and lock myself in uh, you know, the bathroom or anywhere that she couldn't get into. Um, and that, that happened uh, constantly. If I stayed to argue that, eventually I, I was sure that it was going to escalate into violence, and oftentimes it did. Miss Hurd, in her frustration and in her rage and her anger, she would uh, strike out. She would, it, it could begin with a slap, it could begin with a, a shove, um, it could begin with, you know, throwing a TV remote at my head. It could be uh, throwing a glass of wine in my face. There was no need for it. It just, there was no need for it. it, it too many lines were crossed. You, could, it was, you couldn't see the lines anymore. In all of these uh, situations, my main goal was to retreat because I think in life, most important is pick your battles. If, if there's a battle to be fought that it's grave and important, then that must be dealt with. But small insults and kind of teenage sort of high school tactics, um, this Bullying, if you will, it was um, becoming too much to take. So I stayed because, of course, I didn't want to fail. I didn't want to. I didn't want to hurt. 
anyone, especially Ms. Ms. Heard, I didn't want to <clears throat> break her heart. I, I remember very well that when my father left and m my mother, um, Betty Sue, had uh, that first attempt at suicide that I woke up to, and that visual in my head, and that was a direct result of my father's um, leaving. Um, Ms. Hurd had spoken of uh, suicide on a couple of occasions, so th that also becomes a factor. It, it, that's, that's also something that, that always lives in the back of your brain and uh, you, that you fear. I was, I was the first uh, person of the two of us to, to uh, record conversations. And it was for this reason she would, she would, we would have been talking the night before or arguing the night before and she would say something. There would be these, again, these, these demeaning, berating insults. There would be these, these, these jabs. There would be anything to make me feel small and, uh, and like nothing. Um, so what I thought was, I'm going to record the conversation. And I told her this. I'm going to record. I'm going to get my phone and I'm going to record our conversation. Because I want you to hear what you've said to me tomorrow. So that you, because she would deny having said those things, it never took me to a place where I would um, go s s switch into some other entity, which is, as she has used the term monster, never switched to um, Violence. Violence was unnecessary. Um, why would you hit someone to make them agree with you? I, I don't think it works. <laughs> she, 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 she had told me many times that the monster was, was only me when I was uh, using drugs and, and, and alcohol. Um, but it, even when I was uh, stone cold sober off of alcohol um, and uh, substances aside from my meds, the term the monster was still there when she uh, accused, be, accused me of being uh, high on cocaine or, um, uh, you know, drinking like a, you know, some sort of um, like you know, drinking like, like, like I was, a, you know, some kind of 19th century sailor. It's uh, that 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 was the word she clung to to describe, but um, it was in her mind, not mine. W when we were on the road, you know, when you're traveling from, uh, if you're on a press tour, or if you're making a film and you're staying in a, uh, hotels or this or that. Um, I would always have to get a different, or we would always have to book an extra room that I was able to escape to, so I didn't have to lock myself in another bathroom. Um, my substance abuse or use 
the alcohol that I uh, used or uh, drank uh, w was, again, purely, it, it's, it's that little boy who didn't want to hear or didn't want to feel the pain of his uh, mother turning him into some kind of um, ball of insecurity and pain. So, yes, uh, I was more inspired by Miss Heard to reach out for a numbing agent um, because of the because of the constant uh, clashes because of the there wasn't there was, I mean maybe a few days here and there but there wasn't a day that you'd wake up and you'd expect something was going to hit the fan and it, pretty much like clockwork it did uh, she, she was always quite fond of MDMA, which is which is ecstasy, um, and uh, mushrooms, um, and she had some medications that she 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 was on already that were uh, well, one in particular was quite a high velocity. Um, sp speed, if you will. Why would I take such great offense to someone m making fun of a, a, a tattoo uh, on my body? It, uh, it, that, 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 that allegation never made any sense to me whatsoever. Mr. Depp, we've talked about this um, a little bit, but you've testified that abuse can come in many forms, correct? Physical being one of them, right? Uh, yes, indeed. Sleep. Any objection to 581? No objection. 581. You didn't want her to take the meeting that she was taking that day, correct? Um, it seems as though we had an agreement. Uh, what seems like we had an agreement to do something together. I'm actually asking, asking what species of meeting so uh, this is not necessarily uh, 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 an angry text it's just why do you deviate from our agreement it's not about her doing films how do you think she got Aquaman sir you tell her no goddamn meetings no movies because you didn't want her acting you wanted to control her career correct Objection compound. That's uh, I'll, I'll, hold on, untrue. Mr. It's a Mr. Great Depp, guess. Sir. All right. Sorry. Yes, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Sorry. Let's. That's we right. can. We can move on. Uh, um, I'm realizing that her ambition is far stronger than her uh, supposed feelings for me. Yes. You tell Dr. Kipper I cut the top of my middle finger off in this text. Correct. It's just the way it was worded. It doesn't mean that well, I actually literally cut my finger off after, at the age of 12, finding the only thing that gave me a piece, which is playing the guitar. Very unlikely. Why didn't I start lopping off digits when I was uh, 13? Then? Just the way it was worded. Mr. Depp, if you could please take a look at the, the stack of articles in front of you. Um, Yes, it's a stack of hit pieces. Yes, the, the first one is called by the Ms. Hurd's publicity just, team. Therefore, and I did understand, I didn't want her to have to do that. And early on in my career, I I was put in a position where, you know, I could have gone on. I could have been just the guy who was on a TV series for a couple of years, and then you know what was going to be left of me was. Uh, would be on lunch boxes and thermoses and uh, posters and teen idol things and I 
I fought that tooth and nail um, because I didn't, that's not who I was. So I, I, had, had, I had experienced something similar in, in terms of being looked upon as something that you're not. And so I fought against it in the very beginning and um, it, it worked out for me for, you know, for a while. Again, wh why would I start lopping off digits at, in my 50s if I, if I um, as Mr. Lautenborn suggests, am a, am a kind of, you know, a walking tantrum. Um, when I was younger, I, uh, wh wh why wouldn't I just start chopping off fingers and, or, 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 or some kind of, why would I ruin the only thing that was really good in my life aside from my children? So when this finger went, the tip of this finger went, um, the only thing I could think in my mind was, thank God it wasn't the left hand, which is the fret hand. I'm right-handed, so that's the fret. That's where the fretboard is. If you lose a finger from your left hand, you know, I'm not Django Reinhardt who had only two fingers to play with. Um, if I'd have lost a finger from here, uh, I would have had to relearn how to play the guitar all over again. The first argument that I remember was uh, walking in, uh, there was a, it was a telephone argument. Have you ever seen Mr. Depp be, be violent when angry with Ms. Heard? No. Well, the, from what I said uh, from before, there was an argument that I walked in, so there's obviously there's the, that, but have I ever seen him be violent to her uh, with uh, physicality? No. Did you ever Never. see him hit her? Never. Did you ever notice anything unusual about Ms. Hurd during the time that you were living next door to her at the Eastern Columbia building? Besides having great teeth? No. You have known, uh, you've already testified, you've known him for 42 years. He, yeah. You didn't pay rent at the penthouse, correct? No, no one did. Right, right, right. Okay, and then after you finished at the penthouse, you went over and lived with him in Sweetser, correct? I live in uh, one of his house, uh, house that he owns on Sweetser. And you still live there? Yes. And f rent free, correct? Yes. Okay, and uh, is... It has other than the hundred thousand, you never paid that back, right? The hundred thousand that he's given you. No, that's not. That's a thing that that that's a thing for me. When I, if the, how I look at it and stuff, at some point I would love to uh, pay it back, pay back uh, some that money. But that's not something that is expected. That's he's expecting. Would you say so, you're kind of beholden to Mr. Dell? No, not beholden at all. Uh, was it fair to say you're still angry with her? Oh, you know something? It's six years. But it's we just heard six you give years. your version. Am I angry anymore? I'm not, you know, I, what I am is tired, and I want this all to end. Her to go heal, him to go heal. So, you know, so many people are, have been affected by this malicious lie that she started and she created, and it's gone out the door and around the world. And so I don't need, I, I can't even paint anymore. I've stopped painting for the last who knows how many years, and that's affected by stuff. It's, it's, it, I don't, I, I'm not angry at anybody. I want the best for her, for her to take her responsibility, heal. And 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 move on, move on, and and for Johnny, John, you know, it's, his family has been completely wrecked by all of this stuff, and it's not, it's 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 not, uh, it's not fair, it's not right. 
what, ha what she did and what happened for so many people to get affected from this. It's, it's insane and Mr. That's Baruch, this, how this happened. And Mr. Baruch, if in fact she's telling the truth, and if in fact Mr. Depp, who has engaged in enormous rage and domestic abuse and violence of Amber over a period of time that you wouldn't know about, then maybe it's time for him to take responsibility, don't you think? Objection, Your Honor. What's Specu the objection? Speculation. Lack of foundation. Relevance. Those speculations. Can you describe uh, what you observed about their relationship? They were always loving with each other. They treated each other like gold, you know, kissing and, and you know, can what can I get you type of thing, you know, being kind with each other. Always loving, always a loving situation. And they walked in, and I remember the first thing she said was, I hope we didn't keep you up last night because of all the yelling. And I I looked at her and it says, no, these walls are like three feet thick. I don't hear deadly squat. That's correct. I did okay. not witness any physical right. violence. But you have seen Mr. Depp use drugs as well as drink and be drunk, correct? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, so we'll come back at 2.30 then. Is that correct? Thank you.